Okay, I'm going to attempt to show you something that's uh, not so standard when you're learning about trigonometry, but I thought this could be really fun. So I call this the mathematics of DJing. Uh, now this is because uh, some years ago I used to be really into DJing, especially with certain kind of music called house music, uh, which is music with a nice heavy bass line. Now there's a lot to DJing as far as um, what tracks you pick, you know, what music you're going to pick and what order you do them. Uh, there's a lot to that, of course, but the actual act of matching two songs up so that way you can hear them on top of each other that's something that i can i can show you at least because it has at least this is the way i saw it, it there is some math to it in fact it relates to um, what we're talking about here with trigonometry and sine curves so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to uh, try to represent one song as some sort of like sinusoidal graph. So imagine this is the song right here. So this could be some song with a nice heavy bass line. So each time this is a peak, this would be the beat. This would be something that goes boom, 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 boom. And this right here would be over time. This right here would represent time here. So this right here would be when the beat goes. This is like one song. So pretend that everybody, you know, out of this club or wherever it is you're doing this, everybody's dancing to this song. So it goes at that speed. But now what if though you want, of course this song is eventually going to end and you want everybody to be able to dance without stopping to your music. So what do you do? Um, well, what you do is you pick another song uh, that hopefully matches the tempo or at least the mood of this. But what if that next song is recorded much differently? What if that next song is maybe like this right here, like much, much, if you look at this, the length between these right here is much longer. This one goes boom, boom. Boom, like this. You see that if I put these two songs and I played them both on top of each other, this would sound horrible. That's because, first of all, they're not lined up. They're not the same length. So what you have to do then is transform these two graphs. So what you could try to do then is to take this second graph and slow it down. Because if you slowed it down, oops, sorry, not slow it down. You'd want to speed it up, sorry. If you speed it up, then you'll have more beats per minute. So we call that BPM. In fact, the thing that, uh, now in mathematics, of course, what does this represent? Here we want to change the period. This is really mathematically what we want to do. This one here, its period is this value right here. That's the period that this first one is on, uh, or has. And this one here has a period that's much too long. See that? So we want to change the period of maybe the bottom one. You could, of course, change the period of the top one as well. So if we change the period of the bottom one, that would then hopefully make them line up. So if we could do it just right, we'd have the beats right on, you know, right at the same times. We'd have the same number of beats per minute, which is what you'd need to do. So step one in doing this, you really, you really want to, you want to change the period here. This is the first thing you'd want to do if you're trying to beat match. This is what we call it. We want to match the beats. So the step one is to change the period. But here's the issue though, if you just changed the period, it wouldn't be enough. Because what if then your two graphs, what if I graph uh, one of them, I'll make it, let's say green. So the original one, let's say over here is green one. Let's, let's say that's uh, graph number one. That's like song number one. This is the beats, like boom, boom, boom. So maybe this one here. And what if I have another graph? Now this one here has the exact same period, let's just say. But what if it looks just like this? I'm just gonna try to copy this one right here. Let's see if I can do that. Can I copy that? Yeah. Now hopefully I can paste, oh good. And then what I can do then is move it. So what if the next one I have it on top, but they're not lined up? What if it's like this? So it has the same period, but it's gonna go boom, 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 boom. I mean, we call that a train wreck. You don't wanna do that. So not only do they have to have the same period, they have to just have the same phase. In other words, once you've got them lined up in the same length, you notice they actually line up, the period is the same, but you actually have to line them up on top of each other because if they're like this, it's gonna be a big mess. It's gonna go boom, 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 boom. You don't want that. And if it's like this right here, it's gonna sound really bad. It's gonna be boom, 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 boom. So you want them to line up in phase as well. So you want them to line up this way. So that's why step two is to align them in phase. And what do I mean by that? Here it goes, I'll just write this down. I'll say align them in phase. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is do a, in this case right here, a horizontal translation. So you have to do, you know, in mathematics at least, that's what we've been learning about. You have to do a horizontal translation. You have to move your graph left and right. Whereas changing the period, that's when you do a horizontal stretch or compression, of course. So this is in theory what you do. 
Now, I used to like doing it with uh, turntables with the actual records, which is really fun because you can touch them. Uh, but now there exist programs that do all sorts of things for you. So I thought I'd try to show you how to do this. Now keep in mind, this is not at all perfect. Um, and I just, just got this program, so I'm not really good at using it. I mean, it's way better, I think, and more fun to use records to actually do this. But, but let me just illustrate this. So I'm going to get uh, two different songs here. So there are two different songs. One is on the left, one's on the right. Now they're both sort of house music, so they both have nice, steady, stable beats. So I'm just gonna press, uh, let's just say, I'm gonna have you listen to the first one here. This here is how this first one goes. So I hope you can hear it. You just got a nice steady beat. Just concentrate on the beat, the bass. Boom, 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 boom. Just concentrate on that. Now what I can do with this, of course, I can change the speed of it. So right now, I just made it go faster. I've just changed the pitch. So this means I added, I made more beats per minute. Of course, I can slow it way down. And this is actually what you would do. If you're actually working with records even, you'd be able to control what's called the pitch. That's this. Now it turns out you can also control the amplitude of the waves. So when we talk about uh, in mathematics, when we go back over here, this height right here, this amplitude, that's the volume. That's what's really cool about it too. So you can actually, the amplitude is your volume. And that means your, um, we could say the period, that at least tells you something about, that's the pitch. So this is sort of the words from the DJing, and this is the words from mathematics here. So the amplitude and the period, those are the volume and the pitch. So if I go uh, back to this example right here, so as I press uh, play right here, I can just let it go forward. I mean, I can skip forward wherever I want. So I mean, different songs do different things at different places. So you'd have to pick different places on your song that you actually like. Now on top of that, you want to try to put another song on it. Okay, so you can you can adjust you know the the pitch of this one right here, anything you want it to be. And on the other song, you'd have to pick something else, and hopefully that one actually uh, matches what you're trying to do. So this right here is uh, this is my song. I really like this one. So what you can do is you can change the pitch of this one as well. You can make it faster. You can also make it slower. So the idea is to match up these sets of beats. So that way they actually match each other. So I'm gonna to attempt to do that. So what I'm gonna do is first of all have a cue point. A cue point just means that whenever I'm actually playing this, I can press Q and go back to a start point. And hopefully my start point is right by a beat. So every time I press play, it goes to that beat. Now if you're doing it with records, you'd actually use your fingers and actually sort of drag, you'd actually drag the record back and forth and you'd actually, can you see this as I go back and forth, you can hear that, that hard sound? That's actually the beat starting. So you'd actually have your fingers on this right here and then when you're ready, you just let it go. And you'd basically press play and that would do it. So here though, I can cheat and just press Q. That gets me back to that point every time. It's gonna do that. So what I'm gonna to try to do now is I'm gonna to listen to this song on the left and I'm going to try to press play and listen to the speed of the right one. And if I think the speed is too fast, then I'm gonna slow this down. And I think if, if I think it's too slow, then I'm gonna speed it up. And what I can do is nudge it forward a little bit. So as I'm playing it, this is like if I'm on the record, I just push the record forward just a little bit. So I can push it just a little bit. You won't notice a big difference here unless I press it a bunch of times. You might notice something happening. So this is gonna be my goal. And once I have the two songs lined up on each other, you're gonna be able to tell because the beats will actually line up. So here we go, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna press uh, play on the left one. I'm gonna to try to get the one on the right to match. They start off matching, but the one on the right's going too slow. The one on the right's too slow, so I gotta speed it up a little bit. So I'm gonna speed it up maybe a little bit like this. So it's holding now, it's okay. I think it's actually just a little bit too fast now. Okay, so I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit. Maybe just a little tiny little bit. What can I do here? Can I, oh, uh, just like this maybe. Like that, maybe I'll try that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this one back and hopefully this right here will work. Let's see, so I'm gonna go back to that start point. Hopefully I can get it to work. There. Okay, at least they're on top of each other. So now the beats are actually staying on the same. They're, both the beats are lined up and they're on top of each other, which is good news. 
Now if I was wanting to do a mix, I know I'm doing this really poorly, I haven't really picked the right position in the songs, that's okay though, but I could of course have the two playing on top of each other a little bit, maybe I would, you know, maybe I'd play with the bass of this one on the left for example, maybe lower the bass a little bit, but I can still leave the two songs on top of each other. So hopefully we'll hear the audio from the left come in in a second. Notice I still have those two songs on top of each other. Not too bad, but the songs are a little bit off. There we go. So I think they're both playing on the same. You can notice I can kill the so sound on the left one. They're mostly lined up. It's not perfect, but you get an idea how you could actually do it. Then you could, of course, then, uh, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly bring out that song. Notice then you'd be listening to the right song. And what you could do, of course, then is pick a new song on the left and try to match that one and bring that one in on top of it. And that way, in theory, then, you could sit there and go back and forth from one song to the next, change songs, do another song, another song, and ideally, everyone's still dancing and they never notice when one song starts and one song stops. So there's a lot more to DJing, of course, than just this, but I hope that this at least illustrates a little bit the idea behind how you can actually learn to DJ. Step one is to find two songs that match in sort of emotion or whatever it is you're trying to do. And step two then is you have to match the speeds of the two songs. So that's by changing the pitch, which really changes the period. And once you have them lined up uh, as far as the same period, then you have to actually align them in phase, which means you have to do a horizontal translation. That's all about how you start the two songs. You had to start them at the same time. And once you do that, that's the idea behind beat matching. I bet you never thought you could do mathematics for DJing, huh?